Well, no trip to the Northwest would be complete without a little rain. And we've got a lot of rain falling right now at Century Link Field in downtown Seattle. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football, so are we, as the Seahawks get set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. On first down, Wilson rolling to his right. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. You know, I don't think this is the last time we'll see that in this game. This guy has mobility, and they want to use his legs in the game plan. So there will be designed runs as well as his scrambles. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Now it's Wilson. It's caught. Lock it. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now that catch certainly easier than the one Tyler Lockett made in the back left corner of the end zone in the Thursday night win over the Rams in week five. My goodness, that was incredible. In fact, the advanced metrics called it the most improbable catch in the NFL in the last two years. And if for some reason you missed it, look it up. Pretty impressive. To throw again on second down. Wilson, that's caught by Hollister. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. There's Wilson. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had to read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing with four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about it. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Taking it in from the 20. And the Seahawks take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. And they do exactly what they wanted to. Opening drive, they get into the end zone. They do it on the ground. And not only is the person lugging the ball happy, of course, because he got it into the end zone. How about the offensive linemen and receivers who are blocking for him? They have to feel great about themselves sticking it in the end zone on a running play. The point after through the raindrops up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. This fielded at the two. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Ravens here going to get the football back on offense, but let's look big picture at what's going on right now. They lead the AFC North by two games, and I know we're only six weeks in, but that's a nice little cushion. It's an excellent cushion because you had to consider going into the season and you had to figure... Pittsburgh would be right there neck and neck with them. Baltimore, you knew, would be a contender. And, of course, Cleveland was everyone's darling in the preseason. So to be two games clear at this point of the season, that's big for them. The best part, they can actually extend the lead. They go to Seattle, and they can play with just about anyone. Have an open week, home to the Patriots on a Sunday night game. 
and then a rematch with the Bengals. You have to figure at the least they win one of those three, maybe even two. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They go to the former Saint, Mark Ingram. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. He may try and run for this. And he slides to avoid the hit. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. On first and 10, it's Jackson. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Marquise Brown, the rookie, his intended target. That'll bring up second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. <laughs> Luckily, fell incomplete. To throw again on second down, Jackson. He was looking for Nick Boyle that time. And it'll bring up third down. Uh, you got a young quarterback. You know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, sl he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it and he will. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. Well, everyone in this stadium knows Jackson can do that as well as any QB in the league. Uh, they talked about limiting some of his running this year, especially the design runs, but he's still going to scramble when he feels he has green in front of him. He led all quarterbacks last year, 695 yards rushing. And keep in mind, 80% of those came in the seven-game stretch when he was named starter late in the season. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. zone now here's Jackson on first down they go screen this is Ingram and he's able to work it here to the eight yard line a nice little screen they get six on first down so Charles first drive here little safe completion underneath maybe get some rhythm get your feet wet so to speak I agree and I like it because it's a lot like a basketball game when you're getting started and you pass the ball around so everyone touches it early and gets involved in the game in this case it's not just dumping it to a back and he's able to run with the ball but you get your offensive linemen involved because they get to get out and run and hit people in the open field everyone getting their feet wet early following the delay here's second and nine From the gun, Jackson, incomplete. You used to have a coach just tell us all the time, those scouting reports aren't just to use up paper, guys. Well, nowadays, you know, we're watching a computer screen, right? They scouted this team very well. Know that they like to use the running backs in the passing game. They covered that play successfully. Play number nine on the drive coming up, and they need nine yards on third down. Jackson will throw again, and the throw there going to be incomplete. That has to feel like a very unsatisfying drive, right? You move the ball all that way, and then you can't convert on third down. But it was satisfying up until that point. Almost like a great movie, and then the film cuts out before the big ending. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. 
And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7 to 3. Tucker named the league's all pro kicker for the third time in 2018. Go ahead and admit it. The only time that you get excited about Justin Tucker kicking is when he actually misses. It's and rare. excited is not the right word. Surprise is more what we're talking about. 90.1% coming into 2019. He's incredible. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Seattle's offense takes the field again. It's an offense that has been humming in 2019. They've scored at least 21 points in every game. They've also liked playing the AFC North. Week 6 with that win over the Browns, that makes them 3-0 against the division. And they're going for the sweep of the division in Week 7 when they host Baltimore. Almost sounds like college football, doesn't it? When you beat teams within your state and you say, stay champs, even if you're not in the same division or in the same conference. But I love this start. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Patrick Awasor, he's the culprit, dropping him for a two-yard loss. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. On second down now. It's Carson, and yeah, nothing doing here as this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. Offensive line really didn't give him any room to maneuver on that play. Things closed pretty quickly, didn't they? And how about the wrap-up at the end of that tackle? Left no doubt there would be no additional yardage to be found. Third and long, it's Wilson, and an alley to run. He may try and run for this. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Fourth down, and out is the all-pro punter from a year ago, Michael Dixon, to punt for Seattle. Cyrus Jones back to return for the Ravens. A big kick, 50 yards that time with a return of four. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily. And now nothing but green ahead of him. 20. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Ravens have taken the lead. One play. 80 yards, pretty easy drive to recap. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20, you want something to kickstart your drive and get it off to a nice start. They went for the whole thing and got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. Tucker with the extra point, and the lead is now 10 to 7. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This will be taken about the 12. 
And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> so well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Marlon Humphrey with a tackle defensively. Carson, who is a 1,000-yard rusher a season ago, has picked up the pace this year after a slow start. Three straight 100-yard games, most recently week six, 124 yards in the game-winning score and the four-point win over Cleveland on the road. To throw on second and six, Wilson throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Wilson, after the play fake to Carson, sliding out of the pocket. He can run for it, and he will. The rushing numbers for Wilson, maybe down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. You and I both know most coaches are really fearful about their quarterbacks running with the ball. They don't want him to take that big hit. I don't think they worry about that with Russell Wilson. He's so smart in what he does, and we just saw it there on that scramble. They'll run on first down. Carson, and taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. Getting the sense Charles are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Here's Carson. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times, and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. They set up the screen to Penny. And give him nine yards on the second down screen play. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Now it's Carson. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. On comes the Seahawk kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. I have to believe that if you're the team trying to block a field goal, you don't mind this weather. All right, the rain probably is going to help you because so many things can go wrong for the guys trying to kick the ball. It's as simple as maybe you just lose your footing. You kind of spin out like a tire in the snow, not getting traction, and you create a space and someone comes through. And I think for everybody, snapper, holder, kicker, everything slows down maybe a fraction of a second. And a fraction of a second and a field goal try, that can be all the difference. I love how you describe that. Everything slows down, but it's a deliberate slowdown, isn't it? Yeah. Because everyone's trying to be more careful and more deliberate to make sure it's executed. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and 10. Ready. 54 right there, right there. 54 five. He can't hang. He's not going to get me. Set, go. Ready. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. 
Baltimore was the most run-heavy team in the league last year after Lamar Jackson took over as a starter. And you think about Mark Ingram. He goes from a situation where he was sharing time with Kamara in New Orleans. Now he figures to be the top guy in the Baltimore backfield. Although I guess you could say he's kind of splitting time with his quarterback, Lamar Jackson. But a great veteran presence Mark Ingram is behind Jackson. Ingram now in his ninth NFL season. 16 yards, a first down. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Jackson throwing on target to Brown. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. For the double. Oh, Lex 50, Lex 50. And watch the leg. <laughs> Jackson from the shotgun. Being chased out. And it's six points for the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> The quarterback run has eaten him up all game long, and there he goes again, this time into the end zone. And what I like about what I'm seeing, absolutely running almost with impunity. He's not worried about his body. He's not worried about sliding. He's not worried about protecting himself. He's worried about getting yardage. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, you've got to start figuring out what these blocking schemes are and finding ways to defeat them. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. On second down and four, Wilson. And he finds Penny. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. That's what I'm talking about. Nice hit, boy. That's a gain of three. It's third down. And the Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Throwing is Wilson. And he's got his target. That's more. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Ten yards and a Seattle first down. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. 
This throw complete, Wilson finding Lockett. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. The end result, 21 yards. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. They run it with Carson, and he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. I'm here all day. Two times, two times. Three down, three down. All right, all right, all right. Play action. It's Wilson. He'll buy some time right, and he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. Normally we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this one? Both of these guys running the ball well. Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. Now Rashad Penny. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Tried to go draw play out of the gun down here. Yeah, they tried to spread things out, didn't they? They wanted to move people away from the center of the field, away from the line of scrimmage near the ball, so that the runner could find some space unsuccessfully, though. On second down, it's Carson. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. They snap it at one. Now Wilson. And that will be incomplete. Boy, you will not see a quarterback of his caliber miss on one like that very often. I mean, there it is, wide open, got the shot. And he misfires. We talk about, boy, he'll want that one back all the time. He definitely wants that one back. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He had his lone attempt blocked earlier. And Myers able to knock it through. And they're back within a touchdown. It's 17-10. to so this time, the protection holds up for him just fine, and he's able to bang it through. I think their special teams coach got the point across. He gave him a pretty good earful after the block earlier, and this time, there's no penetration, so they're able to pick up three. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. Then he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? We said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well. And he's been right. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. From the 30 on second down, Jackson. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down.
The Ravens on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Now Jackson from the gun, he'll throw. Sneed's got it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Well, Sneed figures to be an important veteran presence for Lamar Jackson. Two years ago, it was a disappointing 2017 for Sneed. That was in New Orleans, but then had a bit of a bounce-back campaign a season ago in his first go-around with Baltimore. 62 catches, 650 yards. Did have surgery in the offseason on his left index finger, but back to full health and ready to go. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. On second down, Ingram. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. You don't see that a ton, do you? Or the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball is moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. He's going to find his tight end, Boyle. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 33. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually you're going to run into their territory, and that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or play on the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Shaquille Griffin in on the stop defensively. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. Jackson. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. He's at the 40. The 20. 10. And he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Big boy earning his lunch. That's what you call rumbling with the ball, Charles. Big man with football. He wasn't just earning lunch, Brandon. He was earning dinner. He was <laughs> midnight snack. <laughs> Everything that you could possibly do, he did it on that play to pick up the ball and go. Extra point up and through by Myers. And we've got a tie game here in a back and forth first half. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as it kicks away. This will be taken about the 12. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Ravens offense now. They get ready to head back on the field. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10, just shy of the 30. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, that's one where he's probably looking at his offensive line and saying, fellas, at least give me a second to catch it and move somewhere. Yeah, sometimes you see guys get upset after those types of plays, but the best ones, they shrug off the mistakes of their offensive linemen and keep working with them. They want to see you have some toughness 
take the hit and come back stronger the next play. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Watch the slip, watch the slip. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Back deep for the Seahawks, Tyler Lockett. This is taken at the 18. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And out now come the Seahawks. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. They were happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick. Other than the extra point. That's it. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. First down now, but that clock rolling. We gotta get this stop. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Michael Pierce in all of his 340-pound glory gets the sack. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. The sack cost him only a yard. It's second and 11. Come get some. Come on here. Come get some. Now it's Wilson. Rolling to his right. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure pressure comes and Wilson's going to go down. Pernell McPhee always a threat to find the QB, and he gets to him there. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Sacks a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Here's Wilson. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. The tight end, Luke Wilson, was the target. And it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And Wilson has it. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pickup there, 21 yards. So nothing separating these two teams as we head to the break all square. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. 
And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Up come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, this is the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Now left side on the swing pass, and they're able to bring him down at the 20. Jackson on third and long. And an alley to run. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they bring this one back. It's a fumble recovery and a Seattle touchdown. So many times, tight games decided by one big play. A lot of times, of course, it's the offense. Here, it's the defense coming up huge. And you know head coaches walk around locker rooms, walk around bench areas saying, guys, somebody make a play. It's a cliche, but it applies here. Myers connects on the PAT, and they will take a seven-point lead. So here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. They'll start out here with a jet sweep, and that would cover beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. This is Ingram. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Third down, Jackson. He's got it to Ingram, complete. And he will be marked down short of the first as they get to him at the 29. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Returnable for Lockett. It's a 39-yard punt, eight on the return, and that will come the offense as they take over. 
The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. What? 380. 536. So no From the shotgun, Wilson over the middle, and it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Wilson, he's going to loft one deep left side here. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now it's Jackson. Roberts has it. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, it's Jackson. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Jamar Taylor. <laughs> On first down, Carson. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Tackle made by Tyus Bowser. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Let's go, D. Big series right here. We got to step it up. From the 16, Wilson. In a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former Seahawk, Earl Thomas. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. No surprise there, Jadevian Clowney with a tackle for loss. We all know how he became one of the most famous players in football, though, don't we remember? Oh, that one play. Yeah, that one big-time play was on highlights everywhere. They want to see more of that here in the NFL. Ingram again. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back at the two. Quentin Jefferson drops him for a four-yard loss there, and that brings up fourth down. 
I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. They could put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told her, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play guy a question. <laughs> hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. Wilson now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Dumps that off to Penny, is running back. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and it's a second down. A good way there to have him bounce back from the interception last drive. Something underneath, a little bit of rhythm going. I know the best ones in the league have supreme confidence, but every now and then, you need a little booster, don't you? This is their way of protecting him and bringing him back, and then they'll turn him loose later, I would think. The second down attempt there, knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and it's incomplete. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that in just about every position, and sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away, and that's exactly what happened there. Wilson will throw again. Yeah, he's got it. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Let's go. Three days cut. Three days cut. Penny will try to punch it in. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. To throw is Wilson. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And it's picked up by the Ravens. He's at the 50. And he'll get this back across the midfield. Striping down to the 47-yard line. After the fumble recovery, it's Jackson. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. That's Ziggy Ansah, the number five pick in 2013, credited with a sack. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. From the gun, it's a run for Ingram. Ingram churning. He lost the football. And the Seahawks have recovered. Following the fumble recovery, it's Wilson. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Here's Wilson to throw. Caught by Wilson. And he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. 
Third and two, now Wilson. And finding the tight end, Wilson. 11 yards there and a first down for Seattle. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. And that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Now a first down run is sniffed out from the start as he'll drop him for a loss of four. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, You've got to win up front, right? Your yeah, offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. Nice, nice, they yeah. lost all leverage on that play. <laughs> Throwing on second and 14. Wilson, it's caught, lock it. And down inside the 15 he goes. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Come on, and that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Wilson going to lead his guys up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. This is Carson, and he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Earl Thomas in on the stop. He shows you right there, he can do more than just cover in the secondary from that free safety position. Yeah, the evolution of the position has really been significant, hasn't it? Because a lot of teams no longer have a free safety, strong safety designation. They just have safeties. So wherever the ball is, one can be close to the line of scrimmage, one can be deep, and vice versa. On that play... How about that tackle we just saw? Pretty nice. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. On third down, Wilson. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. Myers' kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This will be taken very short. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. 
So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. Jackson now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. And an alley to run. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. Well, that was man coverage. So once he decides to run with the football, there's no one to account for him, and he turns it into a nice gain. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. From the gun, Jackson on the move to his left. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot, and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the... And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Taking it in from 11 yards out, as they are now just an extra point away from making this a three-point game. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Tucker with the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Now, here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Complete. A good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. On second down now, it's Carson. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Boy, a tight game like this, fourth quarter, personal foul penalties, a no-no. Yeah, we know the emotions are running high, the tensions are the same. Who can control them best could ultimately win it. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and ten. Now a handoff here to his running back. And a 
across midfield he goes into Raven territory. It's a six yard pickup and it gets him to second and four. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. He lost two there, and it's third down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run it until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. Blue down, blue down. From the gun on third down, Wilson. And this is caught. He hits more. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 35. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Wilson leaves this one with Penny. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 23. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Now it's Wilson. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Look at me like the adopter of my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally, able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This will be third and six. Now Wilson. He'll find Ballore out of the backfield. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Give him three on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position is to actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it. But he's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put in. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there you might out of a smaller back. And Myers able to knock it through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away this will be taken short and he's up across the 25 and down at the 28 yard let's go, line let's go, let's go. and now baltimore gets set to take the field and they will simply charles be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six 
and they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Now the pass brought in by Roberts. Escapes the defender. It's a big play there for Baltimore. 56 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Now Ingram, he's been busy today. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. That's a gain of four as we slip inside of four minutes left in regulation. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you got it. It's a game of a yard. And it's third down. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. And the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Jackson options out left. But he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that's the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, that'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. They come up on a first and goal and most likely four down territory as they need a touchdown and the PAT for the lead. He'll look to throw. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Seth Roberts there to make the grab as they are now just an extra point away from taking the lead here in the final two minutes. Now they can boot it through on the always important extra point, and then their defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. And there's something that you've pointed out in numerous games that we've worked. Okay, the excitement's going on. Everyone's celebrating over there. Who's calling up the defense to make sure they're focused because they still have some work to do? Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. So Wilson and the Seahawks down 31-30, a minute 53 remaining. They've surrendered a double-digit lead, but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. Wilson to throw. Steps away to his left. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. One thing that makes him so tough in these two-minute drills, you got to take into consideration he's mobile. And that's a big plus for him, but he also has to be careful with that mobility. Sometimes getting rid of the ball and stopping the clock is more important than running around and maybe taking a sack. Wilson trying to urge his guys to go faster and get set at the line. Back to throw. They'll roll him out right, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Here we go. 
Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after them, and they get upfield, get that great push, and what do they create? Space, and he takes off. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Back to throw. Sliding out of the pocket. And he's got a first down and then some at midfield. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Not only another first down, that also puts him over 100 yards rushing. That's not something you see very often in the NFL. We see it more in college. But I think with more of the melding of the college game with quarterbacks, we'll see this a little bit more often in the future. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. And now it's second down. A couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You have to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. And an alley to run. And now he'll tuck it and run. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll look to throw. This complete to lock it. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. They'll try the left side. Carson, and he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to almost certainly win the football game. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to almost certainly win the football game. That's our ball, baby. Going the other way. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And you've got to say, C.D., it was the defense who had a big part in the W. Not without question, when you force four turnovers... You get to enjoy the spoils of victory, don't you? It's rare that you force four turnovers and lose a ball game. That's almost unheard of. They carried this one home. He talked about celebrating with each other and being in a position where going forward, all you think about is, let's get five next time. They're going to be on the hunt. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Seattle, so long, everybody.